I can only presume it was intended as some post-ironic tribute to the late David Bowie. My car's oil pressure gauge has stopped working. It's trying to tell me that the engine oil is no longer under pressure. Now we obviously have power to the gauge because when we turn the ignition on you notice that the needle flicks up to zero bar. In this case I can also be certain that the problem is with the gauge for two reasons. The first is that when we start the car we'll notice the oil light goes out. Even though we're still registering practically zero bar on the gauge itself. I also know that it's the gauge that's at fault, it's just electrical connection. If I just wiggle the wire at the back there, the brown and white wire, we should start to see a reading fairly soon. There you go. So it's clearly just an electrical connection in the gauge in our case. Okay, and if you need to remove the gauge, then remove the two Phillips head screws that hold the instrument access cover in place and lift that out of the way. Every car should be fitted with one of those. And then you can get to the back of the gauge. Now, sort of get the wiring out of the way. And then the gauges are just held on by just seven millimeter spanner, and then there's two nuts, one up to about two o'clock and one at about seven o'clock. Undo those, and then you can withdraw the gauge from the front of the dashboard. And when you have the gauge out of the dashboard, take a note of the wiring before you take them off, so you know where they go back on again. The purple and pink wire and the black wire at the top of the gauge, they are the 12 volt power and the earth for the bulb that backlights the light, the gauge. The green wire is the plus 12 volts that supplies power to the gauge when you turn the ignition switch on. The black wire is the earth for the gauge. And this brown and white wire is the signal wire. So that's the wire that runs from the gauge to the pressure transducer on the back of the engine block and then to earth from the pressure transducer. So that's the one that carries the signal. Now, in my case, I know the problem is with an electrical connection in the gauge, but you won't necessarily know that uh, when you come to take yours off. So we're going to do the testing as if we don't know what the problem is. Well, that couldn't have been much easier to repair, which is there about, best part of £100 in you, is quite a relief. What it turned out to be was, you see, if we zoom in and have a look at that nut on the back, that nut holds the earth clamp but also it bolts the whole of the gubbins, the internals of the gauge, into this plastic um, casing here. And the, the nut just worked loose. And what that meant was that these two terminals that are free to waggle about and were making a poor contact with the uh, internals of the gauge itself. So just tighten that up and he's working again. <laughs> Now as we move on to testing the system, um, I thought it might be useful before you start testing it if you had some uh, an idea of how the system works. Now if electrics isn't really a thing or you're just not interested, don't worry too much about this, but just skip on to the testing part. But if you are interested to know what you're actually doing, then this is a schematic diagram of the um, oil pressure gauge, oil pressure transducer and oil pressure warning light system. So uh, we've got the battery here. That is connected to the gauge, this round thing is supposed to be showing the gauge and when you turn the ignition switch to the on position the gauge gets plus 12 volt power into the terminal marked plus on the back of the gauge via that green wire that we saw earlier. The gauge itself is earthed through the terminal marked with an earth symbol on the casing via the black wire that leaves the gauge and goes back to the negative side of the battery. And as we were saying earlier there's another terminal which is marked G and that is the sender terminal, and that's got the um, white and brown wire which leaves the gauge, and that goes to the oil pressure sender. Now, the oil pressure sender is screwed into the back of the engine block. It's in a fairly inaccessible place. It's about level with the oil filter, and it's right behind the starter motor if you need to go and find it. If this testing shows that the pressure sender is the problem for you, that's where you're looking for it, behind the starter motor, on the back of the engine, uh, about level with the oil filter. 
The pressure sender is just a standard VDO 10 to 180 ohm 10 bar pressure sender. So what happens is as the oil pressure rises, the resistance of the transducer rises. So when the engine switched off and you've got zero oil pressure, the um, resistance uh, across that pressure transducer should be about 10 ohms. At 10 bar of pressure, the resistance would be 180 ohms. Now, you never actually see that because you never get 10 bar of oil pressure on the car, but that, that's the sort of range of resistances you should get for the pressure sender. The pressure sender has two terminals. One terminal, the white and brown wire, goes to the gauge, and there's another terminal on the back of it, which is a, a brown and white wire, and that goes to the oil pressure warning light. Now, when the oil pressure is below half a bar, that switch is in the closed position. So when you first turn the ignition on, you've got no oil pressure at all. You get 12 volt power through the warning light, through the closed switch within the pressure transducer, and then that earth through the engine block back to the battery. So that's how your oil pressure warning light um, lights up. When you start the engine and the oil pressure rises above half a bar, that switch opens, so the light goes out. However, we still have current flowing through the gauge, and the higher the pressure goes in the, the oil pressure goes in the engine, the higher the resistance of the pressure transducer goes, and that's what the gauge is measuring. So for testing this, what we're going to need to do for testing the gauge, we're going to need to check that we've got 12 volt power coming into the gauge when the ignition is turned on, and then we're just going to measure how the resistance uh, through the pressure sender on this wire changes as we change the engine speed and increase the oil pressure. One final thing, if you've got concerns about whether your gauge is working, these are the sort of resistances I get from a known good gauge um, between the terminals. So between the, the plus terminal, that's the one that the green wire goes to, and the earth terminal, the one that the black wire goes to, I get 440 ohms of resistance. Between the plus terminal, the green terminal, and the terminal mark G, that's the one that the brown and white sender wire goes to, I get 260 ohms of resistance. And between the earth terminal, the black wire goes to, and the terminal mark G with the brown and white wire, I get 180 ohms of resistance. So if you want to check your gauges against those, that's, that's the sort of resistances you're looking for. <laughs> Right, if you need to test your wiring or if you need to test the pressure sender itself, we can do all that from the wiring for the gauge. So your first test is we need to check we've got plus 12 volt power coming to the gauge when we turn the ignition on. So turn your ignition switch on, have your multimeter set to the DC volt setting, have the black lead clamped to a known good earth and then put the positive probe onto the green wire with the ignition on and you should have 12 volts. There we go, that's 11.7 volts. So we've got battery voltage coming to the green wire. If you don't have 12 volts coming in there, you see that the power for all these gauges is daisy chain. So if you haven't got power to this one, you probably haven't got your boost gauge or your volt gauge working either. <laughs> Next test, let's test we've got a good earth. So with the multimeter now on the resistance range setting and one of the leads clamped to a known good earth, we're just gonna probe the black wire there to make sure that we've got good earth. And as you can see there, hardly any resistance on that. So the earth is fine on this gauge. <laughs> Which only leaves us to test the sender itself and we can do that from the sender wire here, the brown and white wire uh, at the dashboard. So um, if you remember when we've got zero oil pressure the pressure sender should be reading 10 ohms. So again with the multimeter on the resistance range setting, the earth lead clamped to a known good earth. With the ignition off, it's important to have the ignition off for this, we're just going to probe the brown and white wire there. And we should have 10 ohms of resistance. And you can see there the multimeter is reading 11.8 ohms, which is near enough 10 ohms. So uh, pressure sender is fine when the engine is not running. Now, when you turn, now we need to test that it's actually measuring oil pressure when we start the engine. So when we start the engine, we should see that resistance going up. Now, when you turn the ignition on, you'll see that the resistance changes on the multimeter here, and that's just because. Uh, when you turn the ignition on but you haven't got the engine running, you've got the whole thing wired in parallel with the um, oil warning light. So, the, so that reading, when you turn the ignition on but you don't have the engine running, is meaningless. 
But when you start the engine, you should see that you measure resistance and that that resistance is higher than the resistance you had when the engine wasn't running. So if when you test the sender there, your resistance readings are zero or they're infinite or they don't change when you start the engine, then you've got a short circuit or an open circuit in either the wire between the gauge and the sender or in the sender itself. So you're going to have to troubleshoot that one and uh, repair as necessary. But um, once you've checked and repaired, and all that remains is to put it all back together. So, having fixed our oil pressure gauge, let's see it working. Now, oil pressure is a subject that causes a lot of discussion and considerable anxiety on the forums. The oil pressure that you get depends on a number of factors. The oil pump itself and the condition of it. The pressure relief valve setting. The size of the galleries that the oil is being pumped through. The most common mechanical source of low oil pressure is worn main bearings. But it also depends on the speed that the pump is running at, which is basically the engine speed, and particularly on the viscosity of the oil. Now the viscosity of the oil is very dependent on the temperature of the oil. The hotter the oil gets, the lower the viscosity gets. So all other things being equal, pressure will be lower when the oil is very hot than when it is cold. Now, dealing with each of those factors in turn, the pressure relief valve setting on the Elan engine is set at 5 bar. The workshop manual does contradict itself elsewhere, it quotes it as 5.8 bar, but I believe the correct pressure relief valve setting is 5 bar. So the highest pressure you should see on the gauge is around about 5 bar. Now bear in mind that the gauge has probably only got an accuracy of plus or minus 10%, but you're looking for five bar of pressure when the engine is spinning. Shouldn't go much higher than that. The pressure at idle though is going to be variable, very variable depending on a number of factors. Now assuming you've got the correct grade of oil in the engine and that the oil level is topped up, then on a day like today, we'll see when I start this engine, you'll see about three bar of pressure at idle. Now the oil is the oil, the car's been running, the engine is hot, but it's like I stationed Zebra in here today. The engine oil is warm, but it's by no means hot. So if you live in a stinking hot country and you're just parking up after hooning around on a track day, your oil's going to be smoking. And even if with all other things being equal, your oil pressure will be a lot lower at tick over than you're going to see today. However, those are the sort of values, you know, in a sort of UK temperate climate, those are the sort of values that you would expect to see. Somewhere between around about two, maybe three bar at idle of 950 RPM going up to about five bar maximum and you get that at around about 3000 RPM. But like I say, don't worry too much about that. If you're idle, um, you're oil pressure at idle is lower if it's very hot, if the oil is very hot. Also tick over speed has a massive effect on your oil pressure. If, you're, if you've got the car ticking over at a lot less than 950 RPM, which this one ticks over at, then your oil pressure will be lower at tick over. So don't get too stressed about it. The main thing with oil pressure is that you don't want to see it dramatically falling at any point, certainly not while you're going along and or, or notice it's sort of dropping uh, over time. So with that in mind, let's stop prattling on, fire her up and see our oil pressure. So there we are, ticking over at 950 RPM and that's reading about 3 bar. As I increase the engine speed, And at 3,000 RPM you're seeing up 5 bar, but it doesn't go any higher than that. Because by the time you got to 5 bar the pressure relief valve is cutting in to limit the maximum oil pressure. There you go, another mystery solved. See you next time.